So there's this brother who came yesterday and he said that, um, so I was giving him a chapter on the soul and he said that I want to share one experience and he told that when he was 14 years of age he once collapsed and he was taken to the hospital and he said that I was very young I don't remember too much but in the hospital um, there was this experience where I saw myself from above so you know the body was lying on the uh, table and on the bed hospital bed and the doctors were saying that the body is not responding and I was seeing myself from above and he said that in that moment I felt no connection with the body or with anyone in that room he said that my mother, my sister, my father, they were all there but I felt absolutely no connection with anyone in that room and I felt like I'm in that room but like I'm very different from them and there was absolutely no emotion and he said that but uh, as a child maybe you know in that time I got very scared that I don't want to feel like this and then uh, that was over and then I came back to my senses and he said I've tried telling this sometimes to my friends and other people and some listen and some just laugh away but um, I know what you are trying to say when you are telling me that I'm a soul so I understand that you know I am this person who has nothing to do with anyone here not even the body and the experience of being a soul is very unemotional and I for a few seconds I felt that state where there is no emotion where there is no feeling of attachment where there is no feeling of you know the stickiness with anything around here but then he asked me so now that you're talking about it I want to know whether the soul has absolutely no emotion so I said yes uh, we, are, we don't have emotions we have pure feelings and you know we are we have peace and purity purity doesn't feel like anything right and peace feels like peace and there is nothing that makes your blood race or your hormones flow <laughs> so um, basically soul consciousness is a very uh, soothing but very unemotional state so you know there's love but then that love is not like you feel like going and hugging somebody no that's just love that's love which is uh, you know that's so we know hate, we know attachment, we don't know love in the world. So love is very neutral. Love is not, uh, so you know, love is expressed in action. But basically, um, it's not the emotion of love. It's the state of love that the soul has, right? So uh, we only know everything as an emotion. So, you know, when people say, I love you, what they mean is, I have this, you know, this deeply emotional state where I'm feeling a lot of feelings because of you. But that is not the feeling of the soul that's very body conscious. And um, love, even love full stage is a very stable stage. And it's a stage free from any fluctuation and it's a very neutral state so soul consciousness is uh, you know being knowledgeful peaceful loveful blissful powerful but not powerful um, in a way that uh, you are feeling motivated to show your power so you know 
<laughs> some people you know i'm feeling very powerful i want to go and run and uh, not that kind of powerful it's it's just powerful you know you you feel like you're in your power but uh, so you don't feel um, you don't feel the opposite of powerful so that's the state we are in in soul consciousness and when i described that to him he said yeah i felt like that now that you're saying it i felt like a soul but um i don't know i didn't like it that time because i think i'm so used to being emotional that i got really scared that i don't want to feel like this you know detached and unemotional and <laughs> so but he said that you know but now after so now that i'm 45 i would appreciate to be soul conscious so he said do i have to faint again for that so i said no you don't have to faint again for that you have to come to awakening for that now so now you can understand that you are a soul and you can come back come to that awareness so you see i shared this experience with you the sharing with you because you know sometimes it helps to um, understand that what Baba is saying is something some people have also experienced but that's you know one in a million but um, but Baba is giving us the whole knowledge and you know the beauty of knowledge the beauty of knowledge is you can replicate an experience because you have knowledge you know sometimes um, in the world you have an experience and it comes and it goes and uh, like that brother you know you keep thinking do I have to faint again to have that same experience but with knowledge you can recreate that experience you can arrive at that experience whenever you want so you know this uh, the experience of being soul conscious is such a calming and a neutral state where you know there are no pulls and pushes and there's just the stability and being me and uh, there's nothing that is pulling you so this it's such a free state and in the end when you are along with that when you are aware that uh, when you are in remembrance of Baba, then that's like you know that you are much bigger than you feel as a soul. So you know you feel like so when you when you're a soul, you're peaceful. But when you are God's child, you are the master ocean of peace, which is much bigger than just peaceful. And you know that you have the capacity to shift the vibration of everything around so and you know when i was undertaking the course i was just thinking so you know everybody told me that um so baba is a point of light and then he is an ocean of peace so i asked that person what do you mean by baba is an ocean of peace so so that uh, that sister she told me so you know he has peace which is enough to make everything peaceful so i said but why doesn't that happen so he has that peace which makes everything peaceful so she said because not everything is tuned into him so you know everybody is uh, everybody is body conscious so that's why you are not able to draw the peace so but then you know uh, there is this very beautiful thing that baba says in the murli that there is a saying that the birds they uh, drank the whole ocean so you know chidiyo ne sagar ko hap kar liya so you know there is this beautiful expression in gyan and baba says that it is said that there is this bird which drinks the whole ocean which soaks up the whole ocean and you are that bird and you know you kind of drink the whole ocean 
and you also become the master ocean of peace. So when I the soul am a soul, so I know that I am not unemotional and dispassionate and very peace, love and you know happiness is my nature. And I'm this like the stable star, just like the stars in the sky. But when I am in remembrance of Baba, I know that I'm the master ocean of peace. And just think about it, you are sitting in remembrance of Baba and you are the master ocean of peace and the vibrations of peace that you are sending at that time are reaching far and wide and into the you know the remotest corner of this universe and everyone who is seeking peace is getting it so do you understand that sitting in baba's remembrance is such a powerful place to be in and when you are in baba's remembrance you are the master ocean of purity so you know there are um, there are not very many people who are tuned into god but when you remember you you are sitting in remembrance of baba then you are connected you know to this world of matter and you are sending those vibrations and everybody who is who is connected with this material world is receiving it so Baba doesn't live in the world of matter and that is why Baba for, for Baba to nurture somebody that soul has to connect to Baba right but we live in this world of matter and when we live in this world of matter and I the soul am in remembrance of Baba then I am like this master powerhouse which is recharging everything around because I am connected to the five elements. I am sitting in the body, right? And I am uh, in this world. So, you know, I am able to influence everything around me. And Baba says that, you know, this is such a powerful um, practice of being soul conscious and being in remembrance of Baba and this makes you earn an income and what is an income so you know an income is what makes you eligible for a life of health wealth happiness and uh, you know good relationships so that's an income so what do people want to buy with an income so people want to buy health People want to buy good relationships. People want to buy, you know, comforts and luxuries. And people want to buy, you know, a sense of, you know, a status and position and everything. But just think about it. What you call income these days, can it buy all of that? So you think that your income can buy health. But can that income buy health? So, only when you fall ill, you know how inadequate your income is. <laughs> so, you can go to a doctor, you can get the body treated, but health you can't get. Can you get health? So, uh, you don't get health with the money you earn these days. And you cannot buy mental health with the money you get these days. So you can pay your therapist, you can pay your psychiatrist, however much you want, but they cannot give you the mental health and certainly not spiritual health. And then you think that money can buy good relationships. So we think like that, you know, that if you have money, then people hanker after you. Yes. They will hanker after your money, not you. So money is, so if you have a lot of money, you have, actu you actually buy a lot of jealousy and <laughs> a lot of negative vibrations rather than good relationships. So uh, I think that, you know, 
money can money cannot buy good relationships and in fact the relationships that were good they also turn sour because of money most of the time so and can money buy uh, can money buy peace and happiness definitely not so there have been surveys in the world and they have tried to figure out the correlation between wealth and peace and happiness and there is no correlation and if there is any it is inversely proportional so you know the more wealthier the the more peaceless and unhappy people are and then you want your income to um you know uh, give you comforts and yes we are able to buy facilities and comforts and cars and houses but where is the comfort in all those facilities so you know you can you can sit in the car and weep so you have <laughs> you have a 10 lakh car and something you paid heavily for but then you're sitting in the car and you're stressed and you are worrying about something or you're fearful about something so where is the comfort of the car so you don't even feel the comfort of the car even to feel the comfort of the car you have to be in a happy state so if you think about it uh, is what we call income these days really income yes so what we call income these days is not income because it's not able to give you what you think it should give you and you think that it will give you that and you spend all your resources on earning an income but then it's not giving you that yes and this is why baba says pay attention to earning the real income the imperishable income and you know just like uh for earning the mundane income or the physical income you have to do something right so you have to use your resources time thought talent energy you apply it and earn an income similarly baba says to earn this real income this imperishable income what do you have to do you have to get up at amrit vela and when is amrit vela so baba says 2 o'clock in the morning and baba says you get up at amrit vela and sit in my remembrance that will give you imperishable income because you see health wealth um beauty relationships mental health everything is what you attract when you are in high consciousness yes so the soul attracts everything towards itself based on the consciousness the soul is in and when you sit in baba's remembrance then you the soul are going to higher consciousness yes so when you have yoga with the highest on high then your consciousness is being uplifted so when you start not seeing yourself as a peaceful soul but when you start seeing yourself as the master ocean of peace as the master ocean of love as the master ocean of joy then you are you know touching so many souls and all the five elements of nature with that vibration and earning the blessings because you are sitting in remembrance of baba so when you are sitting in remembrance of baba you are like this force which is earning multiple blessings just by you know being in that state you don't have to even do anything and when you act in baba's remembrance that's also very powerful actions but just by sitting in remembrance of baba you are elevating your consciousness and earning blessings and that is the income and that will attract 
you know health and beauty and relationships and happiness and joy to you and baba says when you do this you will not only earn an income for one birth but for 21 births because this income that you earn is not perishable when you the soul leave this body this income will go with you and you will get the happiness and the comforts of satyug based on this income and but baba says do you understand that getting up in the night or at amrit vela and sitting in baba's remembrance is earning an income do you look at it like that because you know if you don't understand that then you will feel sleepy so have you seen anybody who uh, who has to go and earn income and they feel sleepy in it no they say will earn so how can i feel sleepy about it so you know, even if you have not slept for three, three nights and you're going to do something that is going to give you a lot of money you do it right it doesn't make you feel sleepy because nobody feels sleepy when you are earning an income but because you don't understand that this is earning an income that is why you feel sleepy so baba says if you understood that i the soul am earning an imperishable income when i get up at amrit vela and sit in baba's remembrance and if you do it right then you will feel that income also and if you are actually sitting in soul consciousness and in remembrance of baba and taking the position of a master ocean of peace and love and sitting in that state then i don't think that you know after amrit vela you can ever feel sleepy because you know the happiness of earning an income have you have you seen people who uh, who have who earn a big profit and then they don't feel sleepy they party at night so when you get a lot of profit it gives you so much happiness that it energizes you and you don't feel sleepy after earning an income also so and this is my experience you know when even if you you slept at 10 and got up at 2 but you know when you're sitting in baba's remembrance it is filling you with so much profit that you in that you know in the proceeds of that profit in the happiness that comes from those profits you don't feel sleepy all day you will feel sleepy only at the night again so that's the kind of income that baba is talking about and baba says one thing is you remember me another thing is you churn the knowledge so you know you just churn on the powerful truths that baba tells you so you know baba tells us that i'm going to be a deity okay i'm going to be a deity that's it but if you churn on it i'm going to be a deity yes then you feel the happiness of that and baba says that that uplifts your consciousness when you think about who you're going to be yes and uh, people get people go crazy when they win a lottery but you know think about this lottery for 21 births you're going into a world where there's no sorrow no desire you know nothing that you don't like right now so that is the world we are going to and if you churn this knowledge where am i going to what is my next life all about then it will fill you with happiness because everything that baba tells us the fact that i am a soul or the fact that i am god's child or the fact that everybody is a brother soul you know everybody is just a brother soul and you think about it makes you so happy so you know it makes you feel like on the stage we all got so confused about each other 
and basically we are all brothers here and it gives you happiness so baba says that is the thing you have to do in the morning and then the third thing baba says is to earn an imperishable income while working walking talking eating doing everything doing the most mundane of chores just remember me yes and when you do everything in remembrance of baba it's like you know you are you are full of light and charge and you're charging everything that you do yes so when you do everything without baba everything discharges you but when you do everything with baba that also charges you so it's like you know you're using the mobile phone but the charger is plugged in so that's the kind of thing uh, is when you do karm yoga which is you keep doing everything in remembrance of baba and have you tried this have you tried doing everything in baba's remembrance and do you understand there is such a pull of matter and pull of um, you know um, the relationships and the world outside and if you are not in baba's canopy then everything leaves an impression on you so you know everything leaves a residue in you on you and you kind of get drained and tired and dirtied in that whole process but when you keep baba's awareness with you then you you go through everything you deal with it you engage with it but it doesn't color you so you know why when you when you do it you leave it you you automatically cleanse yourself after that so just like you know these days after covid everybody keeps washing hands so you know every time you do something after that you wash your hands now baba says that what you do is you don't even have to wash your hands after and before while doing everything if you are just remembering me then i keep cleaning you i keep cleaning you of all the stuff that you might gather if you're not in my remembrance and have you seen that if you're just doing something you know setting the room or um you know pulling the curtains or whatever you're doing you're just setting the room and then uh, you are in baba's remembrance then you're not thinking about the dirt of the room and who made it dirty and uh, how people are taking you for granted and how they are leaving everything dirty and leaving it for you to clean uh, so you know you are not thinking about all that stuff you are doing everything in joy and happiness and you are doing everything in instrument consciousness and i think you know um this life you know you have 24 hours every day so life is a big time pass you have to pass your time <laughs> but when you are in baba's remembrance you feel like you know everything is a time pass and you enjoy it because you're free from the unnecessary thoughts and the clutter and you're doing everything in peace and joy but if you're not doing that then you're thinking about you know people and places and how they are taking you for granted and how difficult this work is or how you're not feeling well today but you still have to work and then all those thoughts start draining you and um, when you're doing everything in baba's remembrance then you're kind of recharging yourself while you are in the act so in fact after you leave every leave the act you know after it is over you feel not drained but the opposite you feel recharged so baba says this is the method to earn an imperishable income and baba says that if you are into too much of anything so baba says that you are living in this world you have karmic settlements and you have a body you have relationships you have work and everything needs to be taken care of right uh, neglecting is a sin yes you cannot neglect anything 
because you are at this time in the confluence age there is a huge burden of karmic you know karmic accounts on you so uh, what happens if you don't pay your loans on time yes then they trouble you a lot right so uh, being knowledgeful is about not neglecting so you don't neglect anything you you know you have a body you have to take care of it if you don't take care of it then it will trouble you if you have children you don't take care of them they will become a liability in future yes if you don't have uh, if you have relationships you are not respectful and you are not accurate in your relationships those relationships will become a source of problem tomorrow you have uh, if you don't earn your money then how will you sustain everything so all this needs to be done and baba has not told us to you know neglect the body or neglect relationships or neglect work but just like neglecting is a sin attaching is also a sin and you know when you attach what you what you do is you start doing extra yes you start thinking extra worrying extra talking extra investing extra in everything so have you seen people who are very attached to their bodies they only keep thinking about their bodies and every time you sit before them they will say aaj yahan dard ho raha hai and you know this today not this this part is aching and then this is aching and and then they will say that no i'm feeling like this and they will take 10 minutes to describe that and then they will say you know i took this medication and this had this side effect and they are always worried about the body then there is another kind who will keep going to the gym and just do body building all the time and they are jo- so attached to the body that you know they can figure out whether 0.00001 mm has changed or something <laughs> something has happened in the body so that's attaching yourself to the body and when you start doing that what are you doing then you are losing out on your imperishable income and worrying about the body when you are attaching yourself to relationships then you are investing all your time thought and attention in the relationship much more than necessary and you are losing out on your in, in on your imperishable income and you are not in remembrance of baba you are not paying attention to accumulating imperishable income and then the third thing is if you are very attached to earning perishable income so you know a lot of attachment with physical money and i don't know these days uh, it's kind of a not even attachment it's kind of a madness so you know there's this madness to just earn money so and <laughs> you know there's a strange thing you know that you just keep earning 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 and earning and uh, why you are earning never comes to your mind and people think that you know this maya has made us like this you know you just feel that earning is the goal accumulating is the goal and this has been set into our mind by maya i don't know uh, whether you have come across this experience but people who are into this talks and uh, usually this day trading they are fully into this you know um <laughs> all the time just this stock went up this stock went down and they can't think of anything they can't think of even eating and drinking on time and that's the kind of maya that's that's what maya is doing to us and baba says if you uh, and baba says okay even if you earn a lot a lot a lot still you will uh, eat one pav roti so baba says that 250 grams is what you will eat <laughs> so why are you so fixated with earning income so baba says yes 
earning your income is okay you have to do that but what is this fixation with earning or this madness with earning 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 baba says balance out you have to you earn your income but pay more attention to the imperishable income because the other income is perishable you leave the body no income tomorrow but this income has to be balanced with the perishable income so baba says people who go too much into earning the perishable one will neglect the imperishable income yes so this is all about earning and getting rich and really rich richness that can buy health wealth prosperity happiness good relationships comfort everything and baba says if you pay attention to this shrimat then for 21 births you will not have to ask for anything yes for 21 births you will have everything and there is this expression aprapt nahi koi vastu devataon ke khazane mein which means there is nothing that is not there in the treasure store of deities and baba says this is the time to earn that income so just pay attention to it and baba says this income you are earning for yourself and in this earning don't be concerned about anything and anyone yes so uh, concern about people and things and everything is okay about the body also is okay but don't be concerned about the body or people or things in a measure that you cannot see that you are losing out on your imperishable income so you know because that is about them this is about you and and the other thing is only when you are full can you give right so if you're losing out on your own income how will you make the other one comfortable or feel better so that is also another question so pay very good attention to this income and so this is baba's teaching today om shanti